This is probably one of the best, if not the best book, I think that many people could use to learn statistics with. It's called Statistics. It's the second edition. It's by Friedman, Pisani, Purves, and Adhikari. And this is an older book. It's heavy. It's a really heavy book. I'm gonna give it a whiff. Mm, smells musty. It's got a musty smell. It's, it's a little bit musty. And it's older. Copyright 91 and 78. Wow, 78 was the first edition. This book is great for self-study because it has answers in the back of the book. That's right, you have answers. And it has good explanations. It's written at a very elementary level. Let's look at the topics that you can actually learn. Um, I, I think this is an incredible book. The only downside of this book might be that I don't know if it's still available. I don't know. I'll look and I'll, and I'll try to find it and I'll leave a link in the description. Part one, design of experiments. This is really important to give you some, some examples. Uh, part two, descriptive statistics. Uh, that's very important. The average and the standard deviation. So an entire chapter on that. So, okay, so that's, but there's a couple different things there, right? Look, there's the average and the histogram, the root mean square. Um, you know, there's, there's also standard deviation. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty thorough. The normal approximation for data, the percentiles and stuff. Measurement error, plotting points and lines, and correlation and regression. Uh, more regression, the RMS error for regression, the regression line. Then we've got probability, chance variability, really cool subjects here, right? The expected value and standard error, okay. Sampling, it's just got a lot of topics and it does an excellent job. And you have answers to the exercises. so. You can check your work, which is huge. It's huge. Let, let me just show you. Let's go to the answers, uh, A30, because I think you're going to be like, whoa, this is crazy, um, because it is. It is crazy. It's not very common. And it also happens to be a very good book. So, yeah, I like this book a lot. So here are the answers to the exercises. Also, this copy, it just, it just feels substantial. It's these older books, you know? Um, I don't know if there's newer ones, and I can't speak to those. Design of experiments. But descriptive statistics, the histogram. I mean, look at all these answers. It's wonderful. Statistics can be a, a, a tough subject to learn. Um, I, I've taught statistics. I've taught honor statistics uh, in college, and it um, it can be tough because I think the concepts are harder for students to understand um, if they're not explained correctly. Um, so, or, or in a way that you know is is right, um, and so yeah, there's it's a different field. You know, people say statistics is just math. No. It is, but it is a different field. I mean, you can get a degree in statistics. I want to emphasize that, right? Like, you can get a PhD in statistics. Um, so it is a it is a different field. But it uses a lot of math, and it's really cool. And the concepts are really cool. Using the long-run argument. What's this? Let's, let's look at this. This looks really interesting. It says here, a box contains 10 tickets numbered from 1 through 10. Okay. They are all the same size, shape, and texture. The box is shaken well to mix them up, and one is drawn out at random so that all the tickets have equal chances. The chance of drawing seven, for instance, is one in 10 or 10%. Yep. Imagine drawing a ticket over and over again at random from this box. Okay. Replacing it after each draw so as to repeat the process independently and under the same uh, conditions. In the long run, each ticket should appear about as often as any other, about one time in 10. Example one, okay. A box contains red marbles and blue marbles. One marble is drawn at random from the box. Yeah, th by the way, that's a really good example, right? That's, that's, that's a really good example because let, let's think about this. You have 10 tickets, right? Numbered one through 10. Um, and 
if you get one, um, you know, but let's say you get a seven right away. You may say, well, I thought the chance was one in 10. Yeah, you got lucky. You can get, you could, you could get a seven every time, 10 times in a row. Um, so there's a difference between reality and probabilities is what I'm trying to say, right? So like this, this 10% chance, just because you do it 10 times doesn't mean that one of those times you're going to get a seven, right? No, no. Um, a probability is a number that describes the future. So when you see 10%, when you see 0 0.10, that's the chance that you're going to get a seven, right? If you were to draw one at random. So once you draw that seven, there's no probability involved anymore. And this long run uh, thinking here is really nice because it kind of justifies the probability in some sense. So uh, a box contains red marbles and blue marbles. And there's another example there. So interesting book, interesting book. Um, and again, th those answers in the back, I think make it really wonderful. Oh, cor let's look at correlation, correlation. Yeah, the scatter diagram, right? Yeah, you can draw the least, that's the least squares line, probably. Yep, there it is there. The positive linear correlation here. R is a, you look at the correlation coefficient. Usually, and coefficient of variation, some other things. More about correlation. Yeah. Oh, the RMS error for regression. So it's a, it's got it's got a lot of stuff. It's got a lot of stuff. It's a little, there's a lot of now. I don't know how much it does with. Uh, here we go. Test of significance. Okay. Okay. So it does have some. I was just gonna. I was. I was just thinking about hypothesis testing, comparing two sample averages. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it has that. The structure of the chi squared. Okay. Testing independence. Data snooping. The role of the model. Yeah. Yeah. It's got. It's got some hypothesis testing in it. So I do think this is probably you know the best or one of the best books for learning stats on your own. Um, you know, it's old school. You just. It's just you and the pencil and the book. You know. Uh, and you can use this book to to learn. And you've got the tables back here in the back of the book. So you can use these to do the problems, right? You don't need a calculator. You can use the tables. You can use the old, you know, the method, the methods that are taught, the old school methods where you do things by hand. Nowadays, you know, most staff courses, even the ones I've taught, uh, we use software. Um, I, I've taught stats without software. I've taught stats with the software. I've taught stats with the calculator. Um, and honestly, I mean, there's pros and cons, right? Like, there's pros to the software too, right? Because you can cover more material and stuff and focus more on the concepts. But it's cool to see where things come from. It just takes more work. And it's harder, right? Because it is harder doing things by hand, right? Um, yeah. So if you want to, like, do some stats by hand and, like, you know, learn some statistics, I think this is a good book for you. And I think you're going to love it. Um, I, think that's, I, think, I think that's who this book is for. Uh, a person who wants to go back and say, hey, let's, I want to do some stats, but I want to do everything by hand. Uh, what's a good book to use? This one. It's probably like one of the best ones out there. Anyways, if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe. Uh, if you want to learn math, I do have courses. Uh, they're on Udemy, but check out my website for the links, mathsorcerer.com or freemathfit.com because I've lowered the prices. So when you click my links, you, you should get a low price. Also, it helps me. And yeah, that's it. Pretty good book. Take care.